Carter here. Welcome to episode 8 of uh, Mike's Mail. Um, we're clicking right along, aren't we? Uh, this week I have two things for you. Um, somebody mailed in and said, Hey, Mike, if you dropped your blade device and you had to make a choice between using a carabiner brake and a monster munter, which would be your go-to? Um, I thought that was an interesting question because I never used a monster muncher to repel. I've asked, had a lot of questions about that, but uh, I've never done it myself. So I'll take a look at that. And then uh, I was at the AAI blog, which is American Alpine Institute. Have quite a good blog. This Jason Martin guy, uh, you know, keeps it going pretty good and brings up a lot of stuff and has a lot of teaching points. Plus, keeps people informed and you know links some cool videos and stuff like that. So you might want to check that out. At, uh, just Google AAI blog and uh, it'll come right up. But anyhow, he was talking about the uh, Garda hitch, which reminded me that I've had a few emails about why don't we use a locking carabiners. We explained how funky these Garda hitches are and they come unlocked sometimes or can unclip themselves. So why don't we just use lockers? So we'll address that little issue. Um, before we go anywhere though, you know that Apple now has a podcast app? They just came out with a thing which is great news for anybody like myself, like a podcaster or anybody else, because you don't have to go through iTunes anymore. You can just download the app and then just put in the search parameters, climbing, mountaineering, Mike Barter, anything like that. And any of these things that you want to try out the gym or your local Craig, you can just stream it onto your iPhone or your iPad right there or up Chicken Louie and uh, the learning never stops. More Mike Barter all the time. It doesn't get any better than that, folks. So, okay, right now, let's uh, get back to the carabiner brake. This isn't going to make any sense to any of you unless you know what a carabiner brake is. So let's just do a quick review of how to build one. And then now uh, let's come back and chat some more. Let's some more. The construction of carabiner brake. Feel free to play this back as many times as you need to to get it right. Take a locking carabiner. Attach it to the belay loop of your harness. Lock the carabiner. Take two matching offset D's or ovals, gates the same direction, flip one so that the gates are on opposite sides. Now the tricky part, take a bite of rope, stick it through your carabiners, clip one, now clip the other and you essentially you've created a brake bar with one carabiner. That's not good enough for our purpose. We add two carabiners as a backup. So that's what it looks like on the bottom side. That's what it looks like on the top. I can lean back on that. I will. Okay, so that's carabiner brake, and to be honest, I've been using that, you know, my like my entire adult life as my go-to if I haven't got a belay device. Mind you, I need a few carabiners, but uh, I could do, just use a straight muncher, but I really re uh, I don't like doing that very often because it just twists the ropes. I have some footage somewhere, maybe I can include that at the end of this. Um, so, I decided, well, I'll go out and have a look and play around with the monster munter as a rappel munter or to uh, get down a clip and see how that works um, with some interesting results. Let's try this with just your standard slightly smaller HMS beaner. Let's see how big that gets. Uh, here, even at the gate though, it's like... There we go. That works fine. Same problem though, it's playing. Now in this case, it's opening the gate. Maybe I was mis. <laughs> Mind you, if you lost a strand of cord, it wouldn't make any difference anyhow, would it? <laughs> You're still going to have to push it through there to get it down. So, you know, I don't, 
I'm almost thinking it's just not practical. And in most cases, uh, you had to had a monkey on your back, and that monkey had a pack full of rocks, and you guys had to get down. Well, then it might, there might be a use for it. It definitely needs uh, or worth exploring further testing. So I'll think about that a little bit more. Maybe when we get a chance, we'll. Uh, we we'll probably won't get a chance. We've got so many other things to do, eh? Right, well, as you can see, the uh, carabiner brake is probably going to be my go-to device. Nice thing about carabiner brakes, too, if you're really into a tricky lowering pattern where you've got lots of weight or two people on a stretcher and, and a victim in a stretcher, and you can just keep chaining these carabiner brakes together and they keep adding friction and adding friction. So uh, there's a lot you can do with them. Anyhow, let's go on now and talk about the Garda Hitch. And this isn't going to make any sense to some of you, so why don't we just do a quick review of the Garda Hitch, what it is, and then we'll get that out of the way. And we'll have a little chat from there. Right, so what it is is just basically I'll take two carabiners, bang, bang, <clears throat> take a rope, determine which one is the load rope. So if this is my load right here, then I take the non-load rope, I wrap it around and just reclip the load carabiner and bang, load rope will come up and it'll lock itself off because the carabiners pinch against each other. So as this Jason uh, character points out, there's a lot, a lot of things with uh, negatives going with the Garda hitch. So why would anybody use it? I mean, he points out like three or four good reasons why you wouldn't. I mean, it burns up friction like it's going out of style. Uh, they're finicky when they're in a load position, you know, like when you're trying to use it off your harness and they load and unload, the beaners can have a tendency to flip around and possibly unclip. Um, maybe less so in a, in a rescue scenario where the load is kind of constant on them. And you can't use locking carabiners for obvious reasons, and you need matching carabiners that uh, are basically the very same shape. It's best if they match exactly. So um, you'd almost think, why would anybody use any of these things? Is the, uh, the gates will have a tendency to push against each other and cause the, uh, or prevent the rope from binding correctly in here and locking off. Um, and I've gotten a few emails saying, yeah, well, such and such a carabiner with such and such a carabiner works fine, but, and it, it may do, and if it works fine for you, that's, that's great, but I can't really recommend that to people because I don't know what carabiner or if they have that carabiner or to give a general rule that uh, you can use locking carabiners and these are the carabiners that you want to use if you're uh, pulley power. The, and the other point would be in is that you got to have carabiners that are matching, okay? They have to be basically the same shape. So if I were to throw one of these shorter carabiners, one of these light alpine carabiners, up against one of these things, you see they don't, I just tried it. You're gonna have to take my word for it because I'm not gonna do it again. But the, uh, it just won't bind, like they won't lock against each other because of the space difference in here. If I go out on a glacier and I know that I am uh, you know, might be doing a crevasse rescue with this particular device, I what I do is I separate it because if I throw all my carabiners in here and I try to hook up my alpine clutch, it's just too many hard points. These car these things really don't like hard point to hard point. So if you throw this carabiner in there and you have these ones in there and the, and if you have another locker with you or somebody else is in there, then it has a tendency to load and unload as I'm waiting it. It's pulling on itself and this play against the other carabiner. So I like to separate these two because they are pretty specific to, are pretty important uh, in my rescue system. And what I'd like to do ideally is I slip it back here behind the shell and I pick my lines and then I just run, sling this through. And, I, and these carabiners really do like a soft point, right? or this particular system. Um, they work much better, much more reliable. And now I'll hook it up in here, and it makes my system too a lot cleaner. So there's my load right here. You know, we'll have to do an episode on sex toys because there's a lot of things that take care of the Garda now that uh, have been invented that replace, you know, that, that ratchet um, or that style of ratchet and mechanical devices that are much more efficient. So, um, 
But that's about all the time I've got for Mike's Mail. I'll be back in probably five days. I got another one. And uh, climbing tools coming out on straight rock raises. Somebody asked me about hoisted assisted raises and realized I hadn't done uh, just a basic rock raise yet. And so we'll chuck that into climbing tools here the next week. Uh, it's so easy to do. All right, well, hasta luego. Vaya con Dios. And we'll see you all later. Thank you.